to your website. All that is there any truth to that? And if it is, it is all do. It is absolutely true. It is absolutely true. And all that is inside baseball politics. If a campaign doesn't buy the, the domain sites that, that surround their name, then, then they haven't done their job. That's sloppy campaign. As you can bet your bottom bottle, they look for Ron Curtin for Congress, they look for Ron Curtin. We own everything that has to do with Ron Curtin. They couldn't get a one on, but they've done the same thing. This is about dishonest. There's nothing dishonest about it. It's perfectly legal to own well, stevenfincher.com, stevenfincher.org. All it does. Oh, well, that, that's what they want to make it. All it does is redirect you to our website. It's sort of an inside channel. Yeah. You know. This is, you should have done your homework. You should own this website. Well, that's true. Yeah. By the way, I tried to email them and call them and everything. I was leaning toward that guy for a while. He must really uh, be worried if he's putting out all this trash. They must be doing a poem. Well, we think that they're very concerned about us, and, and they should. Because I think our message and my experience, the leadership that I've had, I'm the right man for the job. If you compare the three candidates, the major candidates in this room, and I don't think Randy Smith's mind can be called a nice one. You not know, raising any money, you put $500 million in, so the chance of any money to raise is next to nothing. If you compare the three candidates, if you look at who will, who will face up best against Roy Heron in the general election, who has the best chance to beat Roy Heron? There's, there's no way you're going to come away with anything except mine. I've got the experience, I've got the debating capability. Go up against him. And Roy's going to be tough, tough, tough to debate. And you can't duck him. You're going to have to say, Roy, I'm ready to debate anytime, anywhere. You see the other guy saying that? I've released my income tax return for the last six years. You see the other guys doing that? Now, you need to know how we make a living and how we spend the money. I give the charities over and over and over again. You're looking at receiving. I mean, I did. We've been the guy's like a ghost. All we hear from him is I would rather talk about myself, even though that's foreign to me. This is something I've had to learn to do, because this is not my life. It's not what I'm talking about. It's difficult to do. But you have to defend yourself. But now I've got to defend myself. Uh, and I have to counter what he said. So, uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Did you make the statement that you were going to reach across the line, the how? Yes, sir. And some of what John McCain did. In what context? Yeah, I don't know. know. I think you always listen to the people from the other side. If, if you put up a saying, firewall. This was on that same brochure. In what context did you make that statement? You always have a hero for the other people. In what context? Uh, you know, I don't remember. That was in January on the Mike Slater show. Right. And, uh, we all got a copy, I think. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But we I, did too. <laughs> yeah. We did. <laughs> we did. But I think you want a congressman that's going to listen to everybody. Whatever the letter after their name. I'm not so sure we want that. I, I well, that's, you know, well, we we tried this. Yeah, the it doesn't mean you it doesn't mean you agree with them. The in fact, it's that the Republicans have reached across the aisle. The Democrats have looked the other way. Well, I think yeah. it's time we fight fire with fire and say, do what's right, and you can go yeah. along with us or not. I agree with that. We'll have the we will have the majority after November. I believe we will. They can <laughs> maybe not. They can they can climb aboard or they can. Yeah. And I don't see any reaches across that. I'm sorry. It's my well, opinion. I think there's going to be a certain percentage of them that are going to want to come join the Republican majority. They can reach across that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you have to have that opening for them to come. And you, what Reagan did was, he said, let's talk. And he convinced a lot of these folks who are in the middle and a lot of voters that were in the middle to come to the Republican Party. And they never called themselves Republican, but they voted Republican. And we've, yeah, and we've lost a lot of those people because the party has changed its parameters. And the party's been, been hard to, to get into because the, the party is, is closed. The party needs to be open to people coming in. If you want to vote Republican, that's what we need. We need people who are going to vote for folks with an R. And to do that, you have to have some opening to them to, to come in and join us like Reagan. I appreciate your question. I appreciate your stance. We don't we don't necessarily agree on everything. You know, like the old senator said, he had like 10 or 12 people in the room, and he went hand for hand. And this this guy said, "Senator, I want you to vote for this person." Next guy said, "Senator, I want you to vote for this person. Something different." Senator, I want you to vote for this. He said, "Wait a minute. If y'all want me to agree with you on all these different bills, you're gonna have to come in more than time." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll give you a prime example of reaching across the aisle, Dr. Cannon. 